Hey everyone, I'm Nick Marty for AfterBuzz TV's mini spotlight on, and we got major talent here today. He's worked with Pink, Janet Jackson, and many more, so stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. It's a bumping song. Are there a lot of remixes? Thanks. I know there's a few people that remix it, but I didn't officially release it. Okay, yeah. I feel like the SoundCloud's going to be off the charts with remixes, everyone putting it down. <laughs> trying to get some attention. <laughs> I really I really haven't even checked. I mean, it's interesting. Like, music. music. I'm sure. <laughs> What's up, everyone? I'm Nick Marty for After Buzz TV's Mini Spotlight On. We got Lil Eddie in the building, and he's here to talk about Ooh. Island. New single out. Tell us a little bit already, you know, what this song is about and how it came about. Um... Island's just, um, it's a love story. I think it's uh, the other side of, it's like the guilty side of a love story when you realize, um, you know, you could be in the wrong and you don't want to be by yourself and no man is an island, you know? It's a catchy tune, though, so it doesn't make me feel super sad or like I'm in the wrong. I feel happy about it. Yeah. Well, I just think, I, th I like the contrast of things, uh -huh. you know? I, um, I think I always, I like to make music that makes people want to move. But then I think that the, um, I always love to write a love song, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, love is the one thing that everybody can relate to. What do you want people to most take away from this song? You know, when they really listen to the lyrics instead of, you know, just on the radio, they're really listening to it. Well, I think as an artist, I've, I've had um, so many songs on, you know, YouTube and platforms that kind of just got leaked and people hacked them and put them out so there's like songs that have over 32 million views and I have millions and millions of views all over the place and not in one channel uh -huh. and I think it was just time to to release music and have people come to one place and really um just start to get familiar with Lil Eddie and what you know what I'm doing in my sound so it's just for me it's just the beginning of you know um where I want to go in my career and what I want to do as an artist you know focus yeah. on the artist part now and there's been a lot of behind the mic work as well. You yeah. haven't always just sung in front of the mic. Well, I started always singing, be you know, as an, as an artist, but I, it kind of went hand in hand. I mean, I was writing all these songs and people wanted to sing them, and I was like, man, that's super cool. A kid like me who used to just you know dream about it and grew up in Spanish Harlem in the projects with nothing and homeless and all this crazy stuff, and then to see the people that were inside inside the TV that want to sing my song and. I was just trying to get inside the TV and tell people my story. It was a it was a blessing in the skies, you know. So I just kind of I've been really blessed to just write on a lot of different artist projects and and multiple genres. Which are some projects that have really you know stayed in your mind that, that were some of the best memories that you have to date? Wow, it's, I don't want you to pick out you know one and like put somebody. I'm just saying like you know what's one that you had a really good time on. Um, I mean, it's, it's really <laughs> difficult. I mean, I, uh, I really love the work I do with K-9, and, um, you know, I feel like he was, we had similar stories. I bonded with him, and K-9 is a really, really special artist, and he, um, we, I got to, you know, do a song with Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, uh -huh. and, that, and that was really insane, and a lot of sp time I spent with Usher during the Confessions era when I was like a really young boy and didn't know what I was doing, and that kind of just took off. And I mean, everyone, I Jesse J. Pink, I've, I have Charlie Wilson, I, I really love, like, um, I really love to just collaborate and do music and just, I think we're really special people as artists to just be able to do what we love and make a living and livelihood off of it. And, to collaborate isn't that the 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 goal and isn't that the reason yeah. music is to share you know I, maybe not for everybody but for me i love to share music and collaborate with people and we're all like little superheroes and see what kind of superpowers the next artist has yeah you know and now when you say you were you know a young boy working with usher um is there what advice would you take back to yourself now to then i would say believe in believe in believing in myself more i think that uh, a lot of times when you're a new artist coming into the game or, you know, there's a lot of new artists now that really, really confident and believe in themselves. But for me, I was just always, um, I guess maybe because of where, how I grew up and where I came from, I was always, you know, and I was raised to just kind of like l be able to co-pilot and always be humble. Humility was key. And, um, and I always kind of stood back and just, you know, um, 
didn't know, didn't really realize how talented I was, or maybe I was scared to just kind of um, believe in that, believe that I was that I was actually good at what I could do. And now, you know, now I'm more polished and more confident than ever. And I would encourage everybody, you know, that, to be a little bit more delusional and to dream really big. And if, you know, your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough, those kind of things. I just saw actually John Boyega, if you know, from Star Wars and stuff like that. And he actually just said how when he came to L.A., he knew he had to be a little bit crazy because of all the obstacles that could be in his way if he was in such self-doubt with, you know, it seems almost impossible when you go into it and you're on your, you know, island. I mean, you just released that. And like I said, I expected five million remixes already. Yeah, yeah. But um, I feel like you have to get rid of that self-doubt. It, it's difficult at times, especially when everyone yeah. else is trying to do the same thing. I mean, especially L.A. and New York. and When you're so young, I mean, I was, you know, I was just a kid. I was like 15 out of school and working on all these projects and on the charts. And it just was like... How could I? How could that just happen for yeah. me? You know what I mean? Like, what made makes me so much different than everybody else? I'm looking up to because I looked up to so many singers, so many different people um, that I, you know, I met in either these choirs I sang in or groups or street performers or school, and they were. I've always looked up to a lot of singers, and mm -hmm. things were happening for me, and I just was like, wait a minute, like. Is this real? And <laughs> am I that good? You know, yeah. but um, like I said, now more than ever, I know that I, you know, what sets me apart from the industry and what sets me apart in, in my artistic journey. You know, what was, you know, your first big yes moment? What was the first time where you're like, I'm getting somewhere? You know, um, I, I guess I mean, when, you know, I was in front of P. Diddy and and Mario Winans and they gave me my name, Little Eddie. And I mean, I was a kid and I was like. This other guy named Eddie Morales kind of discovered me. He was a big choreographer when I was in front of Diddy, and they were just like, yeah, you're Lil Eddie, and you ain't going to get any taller, so you're going to always be Lil Eddie with the big <laughs> voice, you know? So, And I was just like, wow, it's pretty crazy, you know? But um, also when I could, when I was able to buy myself some shoes, you know, and fill the voids and the things that I didn't have when I was a, a kid and um, when I had some money in a bank account, I was just like, wow, this is kind of working out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so those were like little hints. But when I see the way people react to my music or react to my songwriting or react to my testimony, my story, that also is like um, a reminder that, you know, everything I've been through and um, the way people fit, how I can make people feel, it reminds me that I'm special and that I'm talented and I got what it takes and more than what it takes, but the skills to pay the bills, you know? Yeah, I know. I know what he's saying. And uh, also with, you know, almost validation, like you said, you saw money in the bank account finally, but what was some great validation when you knew that you're reaching out to the right people, you know, people were hearing your message correctly, you know what I'm saying? Like people heard your music and reached out to you. What, what are some moments well, like, like that? Like a tour in Germany, you know, I toured Germany and, um, you know, my, my first album, Nobody's Fool, never really dropped and released, but I was in the beginning of, like, all these hackers that were stealing music and throwing them on YouTube. And um, I didn't know that my music actually made it across until Ryan Leslie and Cassie and people were saying, man, your records are huge in Germany. You have to go to Germany and tour. And when I did, people were singing the words lyric by lyric, and some of those songs have, like, like I said, 30, 40 million views and all this. None of them are on my channel, but they're all online if you just type Lil Eddie in YouTube. And I, when I seen the, the way that people loved my music and that my music didn't wasn't in vain and that album didn't come out, but it was to touch a touch a territory and people were still loving it. And then I, I realized how it kind of splattered across the world and I signed a deal in Japan and I have five number one albums there and the greatest hits as an artist and sold almost a million records. And um, just those little things that happen and um, that are not really little, they're big things, but... Um, you know, you always, there's always a goal and you always want more. Yeah. But just to see that my music was actually making pe people were digging it and it was, it was making people feel and I was actually doing what I love for a living. That that was more than, like, I, I, that really stopped me and said, hey, this is what you need to do for the rest of your life. You know? Yeah, and how, that's what I was also going to ask next. Uh, Japan, how did that really happen? Wow, <laughs> yeah. <'cause, laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, the music went to Germany, and then from Germany it went to, you know, different uh, other different territories, and then it went towards Asia, and then J uh, J labels from Japan was reaching out to me uh, via social media, and I thought it was 
fake until a deal came in and I met the label and everything made sense and I released an album and the records all were one and and I was like, wow, this is pretty crazy, you know, and then I was out there touring and opening up for artists and doing big shows and, uh, you know, it just kind of happened. I think when you put in the work um, and you forget about it, it's like planting the seed and mm -hmm. then, you know, but you keep watering it with your, your gift and working and then one day you just see this harvest grow, you know what I mean? I don't really get stuck on this one great song. Listen to this one great song. I kind of like just work, 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 and then things just kind of develop and happen, you know, on the song. Yeah, and now, you know, is there a big difference between the shows in each country? You know, Japan to Germany and the U.S.? Oh, yeah. Are they different? Are they all kind of like the same vibe? Um, no, they're, they're different. I mean, Germany knows how to party, party. You know? <laughs> um, Japan knows how to party, too, but I, it's definitely a different culture, and I think that, um, you know, they, they don't really, they show things differently. Um, and I don't know, Germany was like a real, real turn up, you know, and Japan was just kind of like, there was a lot of, like, girls who really loved the music, and it was yeah. just a lot of innocence, and, and, and I just, I mean, it's all the different, they're like, all different homes to me you know and I really I mean it's just it's incredible for sure I just I just want to keep doing music and kind of just you know um, bring my my music more to you know America and Latin America and just touch all the other places I haven't touched and go back and touch these places as well and I just you know I just want to tell my story and sing and um, you know, do what I what I think I do best. Well, I want to keep following your story, but I also want to go to a show in Germany. <laughs> oh, no. I want to go to a show in Germany really? now. Oh, no. <laughs> That's funny. But tell me about the you know ex, uh, next coming up uh, projects that you got going on after Island. Yeah, I mean, I I just was a part of a lot of great things recently. I, you know, I was um, working on X Factor in the UK. I also I worked with Sami Kao mm -hmm. and um. Uh, co-wrote a record on this group, Raksu, and been working on their record, and that was a big hit, and um, I just worked on Maluma's album, a song called La X, featuring Jason Derulo, which was really good, and then Charlie Wilson, I had a big hit with him called Chills on, on the R&B um, side, but I'm, I'm working with a lot of DJs, you know, um, working, on, I have a song that may come out soon with a, a huge, huge artist so it's just a lot of little you things. got your hands in everything yeah i'm working <laughs> on a lot of things and a lot of artists and i have some videos coming out i just did um two music videos production like production videos where i'm in it and um just about to do some more spanglish kind of records and so a lot and then i have some artists that i've signed and that, that i have i have this artist named johan vera he's i have 1.2 million followers on instagram he's a latin artists and uh then i have a, this new artist young raf who's amazing 16 from spanish harlem he's unbelievable he's just some something you've never seen before and i'm, I'm so excited i'm just working 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 you know i see i literally see that you got your hands in everything you got a lot of things coming out yeah now where can we find you on social media at lil eddie 44 that's l-i-l-e-d-d-i-e 44 Perfect. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming in, man. Thank you, man. Wish you the best of luck. Can't keep, well, I want to go to a show in Germany, so I'm going to keep posting on the tour <laughs> dates. <laughs> I got to go back to Germany, do some shows, and I'm going to invite you for sure. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm Nick Marty. This was After Buzz TV's Mini Spotlight on. Catch y'all later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only, do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.